Hello there and welcome to the Card Grotto. Today I'm doing some sparkly spotlight stamping with a new background stamp from Simon Says Stamp. So I'm starting off by creating my spotlight piece. This is a piece of Tim Holtz Silver Sparkle Alcohol Ink cardstock. And I have used this a couple of times, one with some Tim Holtz alcohol inks and then also with some Hero Arts watercolours as well and they both worked really nicely. Today I'm going to use some Copic refills. I really love these colours that I'm using and I thought that they would work quite well together. So I'm using BG23, B04, B06 and V17. And the purple colour does end up being more of a dark blue type indigo colour, but it does work out really, really pretty. So I'm using a paintbrush here. This is a Ranger paintbrush and also a pipette. So I'm just picking up the alcohol ink with the pipette and I'm just placing that down onto my Silver Sparkle cardstock. And then I'm going to use the paintbrush to move it along the panel. So I'm going to go from lightest to darkest, from lightest at the top to darkest at the bottom. You want to be careful you're not using really nice paint brushes for this and um, you don't want to be using watercolour brushes or anything like that. Alcohol inks can damage your paint brushes over time so I do just keep to certain paint brushes for certain techniques. So this is the, the, BG, the BG23 first and then this is the B04 and I'm just blending those two colours together they blended really nicely and then this is the B06 which is quite a bit darker it doesn't blend as well uh, but in the light it does look quite blended if that makes sense so it kind of depends on how you're sort of tilting this cardstock but I think it did work out quite pretty in the end and then I'm going to go in with that V17 and like I say it does tend to sort of blend more like a dark blue indigo colour but I did quite like it. So because there's quite a lot of alcohol ink on the bristles of this brush, the blue has kind of, like I said, muted that violet colour. So I'm just going to go back in and add a bit more of that. But like I said, it does tend to sort of turn out to be more of an indigo. But that's fine. So once all of that colour is down and I'm quite happy with how that's turning out, I'm going to set that piece aside to dry. It did dry very quickly and I'm just going to clean off my brush and my palette there. And I used some Copic cleaner for that and that worked out quite well. And that's that alcohol ink background. It's really sparkly in real life. Very, very pretty. Next, I'm going to work on my background. So this is the Simon Says Stamp Round and Round Background Stamp from their new rest and refresh release I'm just placing that in my misty here and I've got a piece of white cardstock this is three and six eighths inches across and five and a half tall I'm going to stick that down with some temporary adhesive because I'm not sticking it right into the corner. I find that with background stamps, sometimes you don't get quite a good impression if you line it right up to the corner. So I tend to sort of lift it up a bit further. And I'm just adding some purple tape. That's just so that I know where to place my next panel when I want to stamp that as well. I'm going to ink up that background stamp really well with Versamark ink. This is a clear sticky ink that the embossing powder is going to stick to. So I can just close the door of the misty and stamp that down. I'm just going to prep the cardstock first with an anti-static powder tool. And then I can just press that down. I can lift that off and then I'm going to add some embossing powder onto this. This is Hero Arts Ultra Fine Clear Embossing Powder. The lines of this stamp are quite thin so I thought that the ultra fine would be better than the original clear so just adding that on and then I can tap off the excess and then I can heat set that until it's completely melted and I'm just using my reverse tweezers there just to hold that piece so I don't burn my fingers and it's very difficult here to see on camera unfortunately that's the problem with clear embossing powder on white cardstock Next I have a piece of printer paper, this is the exact same size as that card panel and I'm just placing that where I placed the original card panel 
and then I have taken my alcohol ink cardstock piece on the silver sparkle cardstock and I've cut that down into a circle using one of the Hero Arts nesting infinity dies in the circle shape and I'm just sticking that down where I want that to actually end up on my card. I find that it works quite well to use the printer paper just so that I can visually see where that's going to stamp because I want the lines on this piece to line up with the lines on the background piece so that it looks like it's one continuous pattern and that's where this spotlight technique comes in. So I'm just prepping that again with an anti-static powder tool and then I can ink up that stamp again with the Versamark ink. And then I can just make sure that that's completely well inked up and then I can stamp that down. And I think that I didn't add quite enough of the anti-static powder on. When I do go to add my embossing powder over the top, I did find that I got a few stray bits in places. But you can see where that is here and then I'm just placing that embossing powder over the top and there you can probably see that I've got some stray lines of embossing powder where I don't want them. So I just used a dry paintbrush just to get rid of those, it was quite easy to do. And then I'm going to heat set that and that clear embossing powder looks really really pretty on that sparkly cardstock. I really love how this piece came out in particular. And I'm just going to tilt that in the light so that you can see that. Next I'm going to work on my sentiment. This is the Simon Says Stamp Tiny Word Set. And I'm going to use the Happy Birthday out of that set. I'm just going to stamp it down onto some black cardstock. And this time I'm going to heat emboss with the Ranger Super Fine White Embossing Powder. These sentiments are absolutely tiny so I did want a super fine embossing powder for that. And then I'm going to cut that out using one of the Simon Says Stamp Sentiment Labels dies. And then I can just cut down the edges with the mini guillotine. I find that it works quite well for these tiny little sentiments. Next I have cut a piece of white cardstock using one of the, those same dies and I'm just placing that on the back of my alcohol inked piece. I want to have this hanging off of the card base and so I don't want you to be able to see sort of like the dirty alcohol ink on the back of that. So that just covers that up. And I have stuck my background piece onto my card base here. So like I said, that is three and six eighths wide by five and a half tall. And unfortunately, like I said, it's very difficult to see that embossing, but I've just made sure that that piece that I've added on the top lines up perfectly with all of the lines. And I have cut the Liana butterfly die from some white cardstock. And then this here is my sentiment piece and I'm just going to add some foam tape onto the back of that. And that's going to stick down onto my circle piece and I'm going to have that just overlapping the butterfly. So where I figured out where I want those to be, I'm just going to stick down the butterfly with some multimedia mat. And I'm just using that glue there in the centre of the butterfly so that I can have the wings still be a bit dimensional on the edges. And then I'm going to use my T-square ruler here just to make sure that I get that sentiment stuck down straight. Figured out that I can't actually add it on that side so I've turned around the ruler and then I can place that uh, sentiment down. And then to finish off my card I'm going to add some iridescent jewels from Lucy's Cards. And I'm just going to add those onto my panel here with some multimedia matte glue again. And I'm just using my jewel picker here just to lift them up and place them down. I do find that sometimes the stick isn't great on the jewel picker, but what I do is I wet it slightly and then it picks up really nicely. So just sticking those down there. And that's the card finished for today. I wish that you could see the background stamping a bit better. In real life you can see it when you tilt it in the light and it is very pretty having that 
pattern of the background to cover the entire card base and then also that spotlight stamping piece there with the alcohol ink background. Links to the products will be in the description bar on YouTube and also over on my blog. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.